Hi everyone, so that's the end of a, another week in community pharmacy. Uh, through this uh, turbulent period for, for everyone, but um, yeah, we know that the workload's certainly getting back to normal or, or slightly even less in terms of prescription numbers. But we still know there's a lot of changes and a lot of adaptations to the way pharmacies are operating and operating their services, even in terms of social distancing, how patients come in and out of the pharmacy. So, yeah, we're still getting used to all that. We know many of you are going back to operating uh, in many instances, more or less your normal hours. But we know that we're still working with health board colleagues to, to manage that properly and giving people that need the space to enable them to adapt to these new ways of working and uh, and get things right for patients. And I know that's still a, a consideration for many. So that uh, I hope that's going okay and is certainly settling down for many of you now. Just got a few areas tonight to cover uh, at the end of the, this week's video. So PPE. So we know now that uh, disposal of PPE has been confirmed that that can be essentially double bagged. So the masks after the sessional use, put them in a disposable bag. Uh, then put another disposable bag around it, keep it aside, try and keep it aside for 72 hours and then you can put it away in household waste. So those pharmacies that do have access to clinical waste, you can get rid of it straight away in that manner. But for most pharmacies, I think actually you won't have access to clinical waste uh, bags, etc. So it's disposable uh, bags, so put it in a bag, seal it, put it in another bag, set it aside for 72 hours and put it in, in household waste. So that's the, the kind of official advice from Health Protection Scotland. And I know some of you have been asking how we should be effectively disposing of uh, the masks that we have. Another thing that we're getting asked a lot at the minute is around reordering for the masks. And we realise this is becoming an issue for many pharmacies now because the initial allocation that you received uh, of two uh, boxes of 50 as running low or in some cases as, as run out. So we know that National Procurement have been working with Scottish Government on getting a process set up for pharmacies similar to doctor pra uh, doctor's practices because uh, they can reorder through a dedicated phone line. That is almost complete. Uh, we know that you'll be asked for contractor codes and postcodes. It will be limited to two packs of 50 for every ordering uh, that you have as well so that that can be managed uh, within National uh, stock levels, as you can imagine, because these masks are, are used throughout the, the NHS. There will be a two-day delivery uh, lag on that as well. We are hoping, and we were hoping to get the official uh, letter, and as soon as we do, we'll get that up on the website. That's just the process that I know we'll be put in place. Don't have the official number yet, but when we do, we will have it on the website. So please keep an eye on our website for that. Uh, it may even come through, I'm, I'm filming this right at the end of, of the day on Friday, so it may even come through at the weekend. So keep an eye out on that and certainly if there is any update on that, Harry will give that on uh, Sunday for you guys as well. We know as around testing as well, there's new drive-through uh, facilities in Edinburgh and Glasgow and we believe that community farm pharmacies Staff members uh, will have access to that. So again, look out for communications that we'll be sending um, to the details that we have through our, our, our email channels. And if we can put anything in uh, on our website around testing for that, we will do. Um, but that that is basically, we've just found out about that as well in the last hour or so. Other items just to quickly cover, um, pharmacy teams like under other independent contractors, so GPs, optometry and dentistry, um, we won't uh, have automatic access to NHS ID cards. We're still asking for them, but we're, we're not um, getting any, any headway in terms of uh, immediate production of these for um, community pharmacies, but we're in the same boat as, as other independent contractor groups, as I say. Uh, key worker letters that we have produced, and I know other organisations have produced for uh, um, key workers, which we are uh, in community pharmacy. So for essential travel, for allocated shopping hours, uh, etc., around major supermarkets, then these we are we are have a, have an understanding that that is acceptable and will be accepted uh, by these. I would also say if you have access to an NHS.net email address which many people obviously do in community pharmacy. This does offer you access to some um, discounts, etc. And I'll just give one away. So the, the Just Eat app for takeaways, 
You can use that and you get a 25% discount if you register with Just Eat and you have an NHS net address. So um, obviously in moderation for takeaways as a, a healthcare group, we should maybe consider that, but that, that's something else to consider as well. And there's no need for um, the full NHS ID for things like that. So have a look and use your NHS net address to, to sign up for some uh, discounts as well if, if you have a look there. Prescription collection, that's due on Tuesday, so Tuesday the 21st, just to remind pharmacy teams to have uh, their uh, bundles ready for the first half of the month and Parcel Force will again present ID at the door uh, around it for the prescription collections. Alzheimer Scotland, our charity partners, we're going to continue the kind of bit of fun around the lockdown bake-off. So we've got Adam, who I think has volunteered to do it on Sunday. So keep an eye out for that video. And I believe he might have a surprise uh, guest and a bit of help um, from some family members for that. So that make it, might make it even more entertaining. Um, so good luck with that, Adam. Um, emergency care summary, we're looking for good news stories around that. So obviously we've had access more widely to emergency care summary and some, and I know in some boards you have access to more through clinical portal, etc. So any good news stories that you have around that and how it's benefited patients, benefited your practice, please send them to Robbie or even into the inquiries inbox, uh, as many of you are doing around COVID, because we want to really demonstrate, um, although this can be audited at health board levels, we really want to demonstrate through active stories and real stories involving real patients and real practitioners, uh, the benefits uh, that we know that this will bring uh, to patients as well. So um, just uh, one shout out tonight. So one from Ian Fulton of Superdrug. He wanted to really praise his uh, pharmacy teams up and down uh, the country. So the Superdrug pharmacies, massive shout out to you guys. Ian is really grateful for all the, all the work you've put in through throughout this the last few weeks and uh, keeping uh, your, your spirits up and indeed keeping the, obviously the service to patients up as well. So uh, well done guys. Thanks very much. And Harry's question was around the song Ecuador from, uh, you know, a dance tune from 1997 it was, and it was done by uh, Sash featuring Adrian Rodriguez, I believe. So that was 1997 and Sash. My question tonight, at which battle was the charge of the Light Brigade? So at which battle was the charge of the Light Brigade? So it's a history question tonight, and I know I'm doing a history. I'm doing a quiz tonight over Zoom with a few friends, so um, I've actually got a, a history section to do. So that was one of the questions I'll be asking at that quiz tonight. So I hope you're all um, managing uh, through the lockdown. Um, to those of you who have worked this week again, thank you very much. To those who are in pharmacies uh, over the weekend, and I'm doing my, my shift tomorrow morning in pharmacy. So yeah, all the best. Um, keep safe. Um, and keep the services going as you have been throughout this whole uh, thing. Uh, you know, community pharmacy has been great, greatly recognised, as we've said many times, and deservedly so. So thanks very much again, guys, and I'll probably see you at some point next week. Thanks then. Bye.